The question of transsexuality is very complex. It's not homosexuality. It's not simply a matter of dressing up in clothes of the opposite sex. It's a matter of really believing that the sex declared on your birth certificate is very, very wrong. This film is about transsexuals. It's an honest film, and some will find parts of it offensive. How do you cope with the situation where, in your head, in your mind, you feel you're a woman? You feel like a woman in that case, in a sense, but you're phys physically, you're male. Your reactions with your body tend to look male because your body's male. Eddie is a transsexual. At the moment, he is forced to lead a double life. While at work, he is Eddie, but at home, he is Evelyn. He is looking forward to one day living full-time as a female, but he has a problem. You see, he is still married to his wife, Margaret. Margaret has had to cope with the discovery after 10 years of happy marriage that her husband now thinks that he is really a woman. It's loneliness is the big thing. If only he'd be killed on the way to work or on the way back, then I could be a proper widow. I could grieve and have my bereavement and um, probably get over it a lot quicker than having him sort of still alive but different. These two people also have an unusual relationship because they are, in fact, brothers, Patrick and Tommy. But recently, Tommy changed. He decided to live as a woman and become Bianca. And two action packs. Two action packs. The first time I saw Tommy dressed as a woman was when he came here with a, with a guy. It was shocking, <laughs> at first anyway. I mean, I didn't notice Tommy, really. I, he walked right straight through that door. I mean, as a girl, and I didn't know who it was, and he's my brother. Or, or my sister, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I just couldn't pick it out. Four Hawaiians, two actions, please. Four Hawaiians. I don't see myself as a man. I've always related to other guys as a woman. So you're not homosexual? No. I don't, I don't um, class myself self as a homosexual. I class myself as heterosexual, yes. But a woman? Yes. Tommy, or Bianca as he is now known, is lucky because his whole family, his father, his stepmother, his brother and his two sisters are trying very hard to be understanding. She looked very pretty as a boy, or very nice as a boy. Really, she looked, you know, like, had a lot of curls down the bottom and at the top of her hair. And, you know, her face looks like it is now, but except now she wears makeup and all because she's turning into a female, see, and before, you know, when she looked like a boy, she used to have little freckles on the sides and no makeup at all, see, mm. it's and changed. Nice. It's changed a lot, because now she can wear dresses and all these, and like boys, they normally wear, you know, like shirts and jeans and shorts and that. Isn't that a word that is big for you to use? Nothing. <laughs> There's a lot of things in society you don't talk about or you don't hear about, see? You know, transsexuals, and all we try to do is sweep it under, under the mat, you know, and forget about it. But, you know, it really starts hurting you when you got one of, of them in the family. I was really, you know, deeply hurt inside. The day he came home dressed as a woman, I saw, that was Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And he brought me a big bunch of flowers. That's right, yeah, with shine. Well, they may be I mean, you can call him Bianca now. I mean, he hasn't had the operation, so that means to say you're only going to call him Bianca when he has the well, operation. Put it that way, that'll be the final step to proving it to everybody that he really wants to be a female, won't it? You'll see how much happier I would be, too. There's no turning back when you have that operation. We don't I know want to that. Turn back. I don't want to turn back. Come on. Well, let's do the I'm pretty back. sure about that. <laughs> no, bloody ain't. <laughs> Thank you.
I was trying to be what I felt society said I should be. Because uh, for a long time, over the last couple of years when I realised what the situation has been with me, I tried to fight it. I couldn't exactly cope with the effect it would have on my wife. About 12 months ago, he began to get extremely moody and depressed and very silent. He wouldn't talk to me. If I went near him just to put my arms around him, he'd draw back from me. He didn't, didn't want any contact. Um, so first of all, I thought that he'd just fallen out of love with me or didn't like me anymore or that the pressures that we'd had financially had got to him to the point where that was all he could think about. And he, he didn't seem to be aware of me as a person. What are your feelings for her? Uh, love in a different sense. Maybe as a sister as a, or a very good friend. It's not a sexual love. It's just two people sharing a house, that's all. Is my books there? Yes. Mind about psychic phenomena. About a girl that was born there twice, you know, born and then came back again. It's really interesting. When Eddie is ready for work and dressed as a man, Margaret does feel much happier. But it's also then that she is reminded of the type of marriage she used See, to have. Top, the one we've got up there would be approximate from there to there. It doesn't matter if the taps are where they are. Well, it's good. I mean, he's having a gap at one end. I really still loved him and I just thought he'd get over it. Well, it just made me stay and hope for the, that it would change back. But I even asked him the night that you were coming here for our first talk about half an hour before you got here. I said to him, I said, take the, throw the pills away. Don't let them, don't, don't go through with all your body changes, be you again. I was standing in the shower, then you came in to do something. And I said, please. So I said, if you do, I said, we'll start again. But, just said he was sorry he couldn't. Bianca no longer lives at home. Today she is moving in with a young group, all of whom are transsexuals. Instead of heading for King's Cross, the drag scene, or even prostitution, kids like Bianca now have an alternative. This is a new annex to a government-funded halfway house for transsexuals. And Bianca and her friends are the first to move in. Transsexuals are often confused with transvestites. But unlike transvestites, who are men who only dress as women, transsexuals believe they are women. And here, they hope to live their lives without fear of ridicule or harassment. Well, girls, we've just been over to the house. Looks like we're going to have some problems, huh? Oh, yeah. madam, kind. The lady next door. I went into the door and sort of knocked on the door and said, how do you do? I'm Simone. And she sort of came to the door and went, I know you're moving in. You know, you can't park your car there. You can't do this. She's very, very anti. So well, she knows all about us. Well, Susan and I were out there only just the other week. She seemed quite friendly. Well, she said she was going, she'd rung the housing commission about us moving in. So obviously she's found out that we're transsexuals and she's dead against it. She said it brings down the value of her home. Simone, an older and more experienced transsexual, is also moving. And like most transsexuals, her early days were not easy. I decided at about 14 years of age that I wanted to be a girl, not a boy. I didn't want to live in a facade of feeling like one and living the life of, of the other. And I used to go to school in girls' dresses. My parents got a fright. They consulted a leading psychiatrist in New Zealand at that time. He admitted me into the psychiatric hospital and he started giving me fluflenazine injections, which is sort of like a behavioural 
treatment. They tried to coach me out of my transsexuality. It was better for me to be homosexual than it was to be transsexual because in those days, I mean, there was very little known about it. And then they started on shock treatments. And of course, um, you know, I really had literally hundreds of shock treatments. And this went on for some time, um, and it really screwed up my mind. And I look back on it and I honestly have nightmares. I hated my parents so much afterwards for such a long time. After sort of the episode of the, of the hospitals, they finally realised that it wasn't going to do any good. I was going to live as a female one way or the other. While it's only recently that Eddie came to the realisation that he must be a transsexual, his urging to dress as a woman actually started at the age of 12. Eddie used to secretly ride his bike into the countryside to hide and dress in girls' clothes. When you had the clothes on, what did you do? I'd just look around, read, uh, relax. It's something I could do properly then. Uh, as a male, I'm almost tense. I've got to find something to do. Can't relax. Uh, but as a female, you're relaxed. Oh, yes, I feel happy. I feel contented. I feel me. But this carried on for years. Uh, if my mother and father, my father particularly, he'd found out, he would have killed me literally. Hi. Um, I guess, I think a lot of the ends, you know, laminating. What cause is that? I think your nails need some moisturising. Did you believe there was something wrong with you? Yes. Quite what it was, I didn't know. Uh, attempts I made to find out at the library, it was rather uh, restricted because this kind of publication, any book covering the subject, wasn't available. So I went to a Church of England minister and he damn nearly threw me out of the presbytery. Um, so I didn't go back to the church anymore, find to ask any questions that way. Because I tried to explain what my problem was and how, did I, how do I cope with it, and that was the result. I think you might even slip a little rinse on there, too, you know, that would look good. Yeah, something a little bit I was, more... I was suggesting that yeah. I go back in. Never thought about it, I could have given you something today. Thanks, Never mind. Eddie knows he is conspicuous, being half man and half woman. He wears gloves to hide his polished nails. But Eddie will probably feel even greater embarrassment. When the hormone treatment he has started begins to take effect, Eddie will develop breasts. Bianca also is taking female hormones. Been having any problems with it at all? No. Any side effects? No. Oh, that's good. Some people do sometimes. You don't have no nausea or sore breasts or anything like that? The doctor visits every week to administer the treatment. Apart from breast development, it also reduces the effectiveness of the male sex organ. Bianca is keen to become as womanly as possible. She is even considering the next very serious step, the sex change operation, where the skin surrounding the male genitals is reconstructed into a functioning vagina. Okay, would you like to lie on the couch for us? Don't hurt me. <laughs> you ready? Okay. Ah! Here we go. <laughs> None of the members of this household have yet had the operation, and Simone, long ago, decided against it. There's no way in the world is having an operation going to make you a woman. If it makes you feel more like a woman and you can cope better, well then fine, go ahead with it. But for me personally, 
all they were doing is making um, an artificial vagina that I don't think that you would get any feeling from. You wouldn't be able to climax. I don't think that's going to make me more of a woman than I am now. And when are you going for the operation? This year, next year. I'll know when it comes. You, see, you still have to see the psychiatrist? Oh, yeah. You sure that's what you want? Mm hmm. You're pretty sure because there's no <laughs> way of return. I know that, Pam. I've been through it <laughs> half a dozen times. I don't think you're ready at all. Why? Well, come on. Uh, it's just, you know, this I should think be it's bloody just, good. I just think it's attention. You just want attraction, that's all. Excuse me, Bianca. Why? Why? That's not normal, Mum. I mean, it's going a bit too far. I wouldn't know if I castrate this one. It's not oh. normal. You're saying that I'm not normal? I'm not saying you're not normal. So you're born a boy and you're a boy. That's it. I'm as normal yeah, as you are, look, mate. So, in other words, you mean to say he's going to have his penis cut off that ain't cut at all. Attention. Listen, Patrick, what, what, what are your fears towards, you know, Tommy getting an operation? My fears towards Tommy getting an operation? Yeah. Well, I accept, I accept the fact of what he is, but I don't accept the operation. Yeah, but why not? No, it's just, whoops. See, I reckon the guy is, you know, she, well, once she got the operation, she will be more fulfilling her, li her life, you know, as, as, as a woman, is it? I don't know. Will you? Yep. Do you think so? Mm. If, have, if he does yep. have an operation... Do you, all right, do you intend to have a family? No. Well, you can't, you can't. I don't want a family. That's right, that's the point I'm getting at. What are you going to tell him? I mean, if he found out, what would you say? Now, what Patrick yeah. means, you know, once you get the operation, you get a vagina, right? All right, you, you're all female. And now you got a relationship, right, with a guy. Mm -hmm. Would you tell him before what you were before, or you keep no. your mouth shut and let there's him find no out himself? There's no need to tell him because no. he's a female then. There's no need for it. I'll just tell him that um, I can't have children. It's quite easy. It's, it's a lot of... Wish the guy... For Margaret, there weren't any clues when she married Eddie that one day he would end up leading a double life. She had no idea that as a young man, he used to secretly dress in woman's clothes. Why didn't you tell her before you married her? At the time, I was, like I said, deeply into the, the other things in my life, so the cars and bikes and whatnot I was trying to keep myself busy with. And, I believe myself cured in that sense. I thought maybe I'd got out of it, I'd grown out of it, you know. Uh, so you weren't just fooling her, you were fooling no, yourself? No, I was fooling myself well and truly. Because, I mean, for a long time I refused to accept this about myself. It, it was, I, I, I put it off when I came out here. I put it behind me and I started to lead a new life. And although I still felt uh, urgings, the need to do something, I put it away and do something else. But uh, all I was doing was pushing the cork further into the volcano, basically. So for years, Eddie tried to distract himself from his thoughts. He involved himself in male activities like motorbike racing, boat building, even rock climbing. But the distractions did not work. Eventually, Eddie realized that the only way he could be happy was to start dressing occasionally as a woman, the way he had done all those years ago. But that meant he had to somehow tell Margaret. He asked me how I felt about transvestites or men dressing as women. And I just said, oh, well, um, all right. It didn't seem to be anything terrible. And then he told me that he was one. Well, I felt a bit differently in the next five minutes. 
than I had before that. And my whole, then my world sort of changed for me with that realisation. Eddie joined a transvestite social club and went through periods where he would dress up quite often. But during those periods, Margaret became very unhappy and her health was affected. And when he wasn't dressing up, Eddie became unhappy and depressed. So depressed that once he even tried to destroy himself. It was like misery personified. His eyes were so sad, very, very sad. And his, whole, his whole face was, was just as if he was in some kind of agony that nobody could possibly know about. However, he was holding the gun with the barrel pointed up and just holding it. And I said, put it away, Eddie. You know, take out the ammunition and put it away. And he got up and he said, get out of my way, Margaret. And I said, what are you going to do? And he said, get out of my way. So I persevered and followed him into the bathroom. And finally, he began to unload it in front of me. Watching Simone and Bianca, it's very easy to forget they were born male. Nice. There you are. Get this out of the way. Yeah, they give it more fullness here too on the hip. That's terrific. The colour looks really nice. They're very stunning, aren't they? So you've got the figure for it, so you're tall and... Yeah, because it's the plain colour. You can put yeah, different colour belts and shoes and right. make it look match yeah. really nice. Simone and Bianca both believe they are women who just happen to be born with a few male characteristics. Most noticeably, of course, male genitals. But is that actually possible? Is the cause of transsexuality biological? Research has shown that some transsexuals do have genetic abnormalities. But it's not yet understood how that affects behaviour. So what are the other theories? When a baby is born, the doctor simply looks at its genitals and classifies it as male or female. But actually being boy or girl, what does that mean? In South Australia recently, a baby boy with a malformed penis was given a sex change operation and his mother won a legal battle to have his birth certificate changed to female. The fascinating thing is that that baby boy is going to be brought up and treated as a girl. But does that necessarily mean he will grow up to believe he is a woman, as transsexuals do? Transsexuality is thought by many to be caused by environmental influences. Problems in the relationship with the parent is considered important. Bianca's mother left her when she was only three. Eddie was very frightened of his father and Simone was regularly mistaken for a little girl in her childhood. Now obviously the causes are more complex than that, but one thing is known, and that is that transsexuality always begins at a young age. Bianca, you're a very pretty girl. Thank you. What do you remember about being a pretty little boy? Well, I got hassled. I was frightened. I never stood up for myself. Because I never did what um, boys did. Did you play games like football? Once. <laughs> and it wasn't me. I completely quitted that. What happened? Well, I broke my arm. I tackled somebody. <laughs> and um, that was the first time I tackled somebody. But um, guys still used to call me poof and everything. What was it like having a brother who was regarded around the school as a bit of a poof? Uncomfortable. <laughs> did you have to fight for him? Yeah, I did. I mean, he comes over to me and, and tells me about it and I have to... I, I feel as if though I have to protect him, so... You actually had fist fights? Yeah. I thought I was gay. At 14, I didn't have much success with um, having sex with females. 
which I tried several times. Did you get erections? Yes and no. Um, it was up to an extent where I could have sex with females, but I never released. I've always thought there was something wrong with me because I've never released. Tommy slowly drifted away from home and into the gay scene, where he did have a permanent relationship for two years. But his problems didn't end there because he also discovered what it meant to be poof to bashed. The first time I got bashed was very traumatic. I walked down the stairs to get off the train and these guys, they were really drunk. And they just called me poof and everything else and I just ignored them. One of them walked up to me and started belting into me. I started crying and I was thinking to myself, how could you guys really bash somebody this bad? Transsexuals have no legal recognition and their place in the community is confused and difficult. It's not easy for them to find permanent relationships. But Simone is fortunate. 18 months ago, she met Les. It's taken me so long to get something stable in my life. Whether this is in direct relation to all those shock treatments I did have, I, I don't know. But since I've been with Les, I seem to have somebody I can confide in, somebody that understands. And you feel, well, nothing's going to happen to me anymore because I've got somebody there that loves me and is going to look after me. Shelling, I'll go in for a swim. I'd been around to three or four nightclubs that evening, and uh, there was a last, last resort. <laughs> I was looking for someone to talk to, and I saw Simone there, and I thought, oh, that's not bad. <laughs> and uh, we just met there. Simone told me straight away that she was transsexual, so there wasn't going to be any misunderstanding, and I liked her, and it didn't make any difference. And uh, as far as I was concerned, it was like a normal heterosexual relationship. When I found out that uh, Simone had not had the operation, I, my first reaction was that I felt like I'd been conned. Hey, what's, what's the story, you know? You, you're heterosexual, you're supposed to be going out with women, real women. So, what was the story? <laughs> it, it takes a bit of um, searching. I just started thinking about uh, whether I would just leave it alone and never see her again. But uh, things changed. It didn't take long before I... <laughs> well, she was a very interesting woman. I'd never struck anyone so, so interesting. It was so much... Exciting. So exciting. More so than any other woman I'd met for a long time. It's the type of the woman I was looking for. We could play rugby together. <laughs> I'm lucky because people don't know. So, of course, if I'm lying on the beach topless, I don't turn around to the beach inspector and say, I was born a male and the law doesn't apply to me. If I want to walk around topless, I can walk around topless. I mean, I go to the ladies and nobody says anything, but perhaps if I was six foot two and felt like a truck driver, well, then I might have problems. I've always detested looking in mirrors. I never really cared for my appearance as a male. I feel I am a woman. I believe it with every bit of fiber I have in my body. My body is something else again, but... Uh, you don't like your body, do you? Not really, you never have. Women like to look good, especially to attract the opposite sex. I can honestly say women um, have a lot of pizzazz. They're very romantic.
something has just completely changed him. It's like some, some in alien invasion has just come out of a space and into his body, you know, taking over. You know, it's, it's hard to believe. Like, he's, he's a girl now. He acts like a girl now, and he's just doesn't act like my brother anymore. He thinks he's obligated, because he's my brother, to change my life. To get me interested in women, not men. See? What does he think younger. you are? He treats me as male. An ordinary male. How can he treat you as a male when you look like you look? Well, he refuses to accept me for what I am. I mean, as brothers, you could hardly have a shower together, could you? <laughs> no. No. We couldn't. Lovely, Simone. Where'd you get that from? I bought it yesterday. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's very nice. Where's Bianca? You ready, Bianca? We're going soon, Bianca. Oh, that looks nice. Right, right. Yeah, that looks nice. It matches. Take your tag off here. What tag? See if you can get it off, Simone. There we are. Oh, it came up. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, that oh, well, good. we're Just ready. Pop this under here under the belt there. Okay, what well, car are we going? Well, we'll go. What car are we we'll going? we sports car. that I'm a transsexual by my voice, especially in a loud disco or something or other. I have to speak up and my voice gets very husky and they sort of say, oh, gee, you've got a husky voice. You know, I sort of wriggle my way out of that very well. <laughs> I've learnt to. psych himself up to have relations with me or make love to me. If my toe ventured over into his side, he'd say, you're coming over to my side of the bed, go back to your own side. And it was very traumatic for me. I thought that maybe all of a sudden I'd become so repellent to him that he couldn't stand to see me. But my intellect took over and I realised that he was jealous of what I had, my physical attributes. Sexual activity for me has always I've been more or less a, as if I'm asexual, largely. There's very little sexual drive in me. But you had sex with your wife? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I realised that if you can visualise yourself being in a situation, I was in the female situation. While you were making love as a man, you were pretending you yes, were a woman? Yes, yes. <laughs> Do you feel very sexual as a female? Yes, I do. Do you feel you can flirt with fellas and engage their attention? Well, I can flirt with fellas, 
and engage with their attention. But when they find out I've got a penis, they, they think to themselves, oh, I don't want to know her, you know, because she, she's got a cock or what. See, because I get very, I get very scared when I tell guys. I feel like I'm scared that I'm going to get rejected. I'm scared that, uh, that they don't want to know me anymore. I get scared that I'm going to get a smack in the mouth. I might become a sec. Have you started your course yet? No, I start next year. Eligible age, 25, 23. 25. Oh, I, will get rid of I feel as if our family has failed. Because I, I, I don't know, because I, I wanted my brother to have a family, get married, family, and have kids, carry on the name. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it, although I, I'd like to. So, you going to the beach much, or what? Gotta be Jackie. Oh, he looks like a spunk. Oh, he is. Shut up, Tom. <laughs> Why? Tommy's behaviour has caused Patrick to feel shame and embarrassment oh, for years. And having a transsexual in the family also means coping with what other people say. Everybody teases me because Tommy's um, getting transsexual. Transsexual. Seeing other people that I don't know and they just come up to me and say, is your brother I'm a girl now or something. I'll just say mind your own business and walk off. If they want to bash me, go ahead, because I'll only get back at them. So even I don't really care. At that school, I used to say I had two brothers, one sister. And now, I'd say I've got two sisters and one brother. Could you kiss your brother no. as a sister? No. You couldn't? Couldn't hold hands? No. Jim, you find that hard to handle, don't you? It's very hard to handle, you know, because the emotions we're going through, you know, is finding out after all these years, you know, that he is a trans... Transsexual. Transsexual. And transsexual, you know, it's very hard. Because, you know, I got, I got mates, you know, coming to my place that calls him a poof and all those things more, so, you know, some way you're clashing with your mates because I don't understand. You'll never have a reason. Even, even, when the, you know even, now, even when the time comes where you... You know why? No, because there's people, biased people like yeah. you that don't yeah. accept it. Fair enough. Why. Fair enough. Yeah. You know why the suicide rate is so high? Because people, ordinary normal people like us won't accept them. And if people like us would accept them as normal human beings, then the suicide rate wouldn't be so high. They've it's got not, to give those fellas a go. It's not it's only not that, but even family life, you know, their own parents, you know, don't, 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 rec don't recognise it, you know? What would you do if, say, we don't want to know you, no, and Oma doesn't want to know you, and nobody wants to know you? Where would you end up? In the gutter? Not far. I'd probably be dead now. You ready, sir? Yes, I'm ready. Is she coming? Yes, she's coming. Come, Come on, on, miss. Come on, miss. I'll turn off the fire, because I'll oh, turn yeah. off the fire. Turn off the fire. Right the fire. I'll put it on after the big fire. I was prepared not to tell anybody and it would have been fairly easy because when the time comes for him to leave home well then I would have just said we'd separated but he seems to think that that they should know well there were friends that I would never contact again because he told them without my knowing one of the couples that we live near he is a very religious man and he said it's an abomination before the Lord. And I said that there must have been some unhappy joke on the part of the Creator to have brought these people to birth. Telling people, or coming out of the closet as it is known, is a traumatic step to take. Bianca, throughout her life, has experienced rejection. So while she is wary about telling people of her new life, she is also very proud and excited about it. But there are still some old friends who know nothing of Tommy's change to Bianca. Hi, this is Tommy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Haven't heard it from you for a long time. Bianca has decided yeah. that it could be fun to surprise a group of old school friends, and so she is organising a reunion. Anyway, it will also I give her the opportunity to tell them personally of what has happened. She has no idea how they will react. You look shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you like it? New name. It's different. You look beautiful, Tommy. Thank Your name's Tommy still? No, it's Bianca now. Bianca. We can't call you Tommy. <laughs> when you came to my house, my mother really felt sorry for you because I said to my mum, you know that Tommy's a poof. They really felt sorry for you. If they saw you now, they die. My parents did too. <laughs> uh, can I go to Lou, please? Which one do you go in? That is cool. <laughs> I just wanted to know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <coughs> strange. What are we going to eat? I believe it. <laughs> I knew it was Tommy, but I just didn't know what to think. I was dumbfounded. <laughs> he had me for words for a change. I didn't know who it was. <laughs> and then I focused on the face and, I don't know, I thought he looked good, <laughs> but weird. <laughs> changed. When I saw him, I didn't recognize him at all. Then when I, when he sat down, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I thought he'd be the same Tommy we knew at school, you know? You're back. Yeah. Is it fun? <laughs> what? I'm dressing in the lady's room. <laughs> <laughs> I can honestly say that I do love Liz because I thought I'd love a lot of other men before I met Liz. Anybody that is going to put up with the ridicule of living with somebody like myself or like Bianca or like the thousands of others in Australia has to be a special type of guy. Marriage is another situation. It's just one, one more thing that we can't look forward to. You know, already our lives are mounted with so many things that society stops us from doing. It's just another one, another step, another hurdle, but it's just so difficult to get over. I don't think I'm generally attractive to men. I look on my meeting with Eddie as a sort of a happy accident that, that I just happened to meet somebody who did fall in love with me, but I don't feel that I could have that impact on anybody again. But I hoped to. I loved him. We had a great, great happy years together. More than a lot of people have. So, no, I'm not sorry. Not... But I wouldn't ever advise anybody to go. I mean, if I meet anybody, I'm going to ask them if they're a cross-dresser. <laughs> because I know what to look for next time. Yeah, I've already started to collect what you call glory box. Uh, I've got scales, pots, pans, crock cooking gear, uh, fry pans, scales, cutlery set, crockery in the back of there, it's a dinner set, with some towels. I've got a lot more to get, but it's a start from when I start living full time as Evelyn, which I don't know, depends on the job situation. The sooner the better for me. But Probably for market too would be better. But I've got quite a lot of stuff so far. I like looking to see what it look like and try to visualise how they'll fit into what I want to be, how I feel I am. I'm sure he's looking forward to going on to his new life. He's very excited and very happy that at last he's found in life what he's been searching for for so long. And I'm pleased that he has. Not pleased for me. It's 
changed. Sad, in a way. I've got to sort of adjust to him now. And that's going to be hard. I mean, all these years I've been calling him Tommy and known him as Tommy, you know, grew up, grew up with Tommy. And it's so hard now. I've really got to call him Bianca, start calling him that before he has an operation and things like that. I prefer to be known as Bianca. Because that's the way I relate to people, as Bianca. Because Tommy doesn't exist anymore. Saturday night from the best-selling author of Jaws, Nick Nolte and Jacqueline Bissett star in The Deep. It began as a romantic diving holiday in Bermuda and ended in a race for a sunken fortune and a battle for their lives. Descend to the beauty and chilling terror of The Deep, 8.30 Saturday night on 9. We'll check the latest news headlines in a moment, then join Dan Tanner in Vegas.